you ordered Ethernet service and your telecom service provider sent you a site readiness document labeled EUCR, Euchre. Now you're wondering, what's Euchre? Euchre, or End User Contingency Requirements, are the list of tasks you'll need to complete before the service provider will install your Ethernet. Think of it as a series of flaming hoops you've got to jump through before you get your Ethernet service working. Hoop 1. A validated conduit pathway into your building. Hoop 2. A pathway to your suite from the phone room. Hoop 3. Backboard space for circuit delivery. Hoop 4. A dedicated power outlet. And Hoop 5. Grounding for telecom service providers' equipment. Without experience and a firm understanding of the details, it's easy to get burned. The pain comes in the form of costly site revisits, delays, and mishaps. This video covers the essential tasks your local access provider requires you to complete prior to delivering your Ethernet service. Before jumping through any hoops, it's essential to understand and plan the details of your Ethernet project. Recommended steps are Site validate the Euchre letter to determine the requirements provided are correct and accurate. Analyze requirements for cost savings and suggestions for changes in the specification. Meet with a building representative for approval. Set up a meeting with the local access provider engineer with Euchre letter to nail down the exact requirements. Hoop 1. A validated conduit pathway into your building. Yes, many are surprised to learn that they will be responsible for providing a secure cable path from the property line to their building. This usually means boring or trenching an underground path from a nearby manhole, running aerial conduit from utility poles, as well as installing conduit through parking areas. If a conduit pathway already exists, the service provider requires it be validated for usability before they will install. You'll need to provide a new conduit pathway if Existing conduit is too congested to pull additional cable through Existing pathway is damaged and cannot be used Or there is no conduit going to the building In any of these cases, boring or trenching a new pathway will be your responsibility You'll need to coordinate any digging efforts with property management as well as local utilities Congratulations if you already have cabling going to your building and adequate capacity. Your telecom service provider should be able to inform you of this. If you don't, an Ethernet Site Readiness Pro can determine the fastest, most economical way to get carrier-approved conduit and pathway to your building with building owner's approval. Hoop 2. Carrier-approved pathway and cabling from the building telecom room to the customer's suite. In a multi-story building, a conduit or interduct is typically routed up through a vertical cable path called the riser system. Conduit must then be routed to the customer's networking equipment, typically located in their office space. Things to remember. Be aware of fire ratings for cable and interduct when installing in air plenum spaces in your building. A building owner representative will need to be advised if additional core holes are required due to cabling capacity fill ratio. Adding a new core hole will require floor x-raying. Again, if you already have all this installed, congratulations, you're through another flaming hoop. Hoop 3. Fire rated backboard space with access to customer networking equipment and approved power supply. The Euchre letter will outline minimum backboard or rack space required for their Ethernet services. Two areas of importance. Make sure the wood is fire rated and it must be located in a spot that meets environmental and safety regulations. Hoop 4. A dedicated power outlet for local access provider equipment. Without it, an electrician will be needed to install a duplex outlet that meets local access provider's requirements. Hoop 5. Grounding for telecom service provider's equipment. All service provider's equipment will need to be grounded this usually means installing a ground bar and ground wire that protects all equipment from electrical hazards and meets equipment manufacturer's warranty specifications. Make sure you've met these power and grounding requirements, or the local access provider techs won't be able to install Ethernet services. Once you're through this hoop, congratulations! You may be ready for your telecom service provider to deliver Ethernet. 
The Euchre letter will be the ultimate determination of how many hoops you have to jump through and the details of each. As you can see, site readiness presents a number of challenging obstacles to Ethernet service. The greatest is understanding the technical difficulties of the Euchre letter specific to your site and working with the local access provider. Too often, this results in misunderstandings, mishaps, the need for site revisits, and the associated costs and delays. The fastest and least expensive way to get through the hoops is to have an experienced professional manage the process right from the start. Concert Technologies is the leading Ethernet site readiness firm telecom service providers call to help customers prepare for service every day, everywhere. Give us a call and we'll be happy to manage and install those Euchre details for the fastest possible delivery of your Ethernet services. Business happens at the speed of technology. Are you ready? Be ready. Concert Technologies. Orchestrated technology rollouts.